guys, welcome to Supercars of London and welcome to a beautiful day. I am down at Southern Sky Motors because they have kindly invited me back to drive another car that is in their stock list. You may remember the last video that I filmed down here, the Mercedes-Benz AMG GTS, which has unfortunately been sold. But the whole point of that video was comparing my Lamborghini 2011 hardcore Italian supercar versus a 2015 German super sports car. Both completely different cars, but both the same price bracket. What can you get for a brand new super sports car compared to a slightly used supercar? Today's video, I'm gonna be comparing Southern Sky Motors Aston Martin Virage. It is a 2012 and it is for sale for 77,995 pounds. Whereas my Lamborghini is still in the same sort of price bracket as the Mercedes AMG GTSs, which are around 110, 120,000 pounds. So I wanna get behind the wheel, experience it, understand a little bit more about the Aston Martin. It is so classy, it looks fantastic. It sounds fantastic, so I want to get behind the wheel, get some experience under my belt of driving an Aston Martin. The Aston Martin Virage was in between the DB9 facelift and also the Aston Martin DBS, which was widely popular thanks to James Bond. So let's have a closer look at this Aston Martin, find out about what sort of equipment you get for £80,000. So let's get up close and personal to the 2012 V12 Aston Martin Virage. This car is lightning silver with black leather and it's got light grey Alcantara headlining which when I get inside I'm going to definitely check out because Alcantara is one of my favourite materials to use to the interior of any car. Luckily my shadow is now out of the picture. This car has got carbon ceramic brakes which is a massive massive optional extra especially in the Lamborghini. I think it costs around nine to twelve thousand pounds more if you want to spec carbon ceramic brakes from you on the Lamborghini. This Aston Martin here has got them. It has got a bunch of other stuff, things like parking sensors, which my car doesn't have, electric folding mirrors, which my car does have, heated seats, which my car doesn't have, cruise control, which my car doesn't have, climate control, which my car doesn't have. Right, maybe you just got a quick glimpse of just how windy it is out there and to be in the comfort of this absolutely beautiful car. Grant is just putting the tray plates on the back and he's going to be joining me in the passenger seat. Pure Aston Martin. That does it not say? Wait, put, put that, push it out again now, put your foot on the brake and hold it down. Ah. There we go. Quite, quite so scared. Better oh. take it back again. <laughs> there we go. Off. You just take your foot off the brake, as like with the Mercedes, and then you lurch forward a little bit. Something that you're definitely not. <laughs> I'm not used to in the Lamborghini. I already feel com more comfortable driving this car than I did with the Mercedes. Like I don't know. I just I think the driving position, where you're actually situated in the car with how close you are to the nose, but how far away you are from the tail. Whereas yeah. the Mercedes, you're so far back and you've just got the massive aggressive and quite daunting nose in front of you. The Mercedes is aggressive. And again, this is such a different car to the Lambo because the Lambo, you're right up to the nose of the car. This is such a cruiser. <laughs> I could just sit like this all day long. 25 30% throttle. <laughs> it's got quite, it's still got quite a stiff suspension for, I suppose, a sports car or a GT car on these country roads, but they are quite uneven in places. But the sport part and the suspension yeah. setting down there to make it even more. I think we'll, yeah, we'll, um, maybe we'll compare after the, after the drive. We'll put the suspension button on and the sport button on on this road so we've got a direct comparison on the way back. But as cars go, it's quiet, not that much road noise. It's just a really nice car to drive. I wasn't expecting to like it so much from the word go. I thought I'd have to, I thought the Aston Martin would be in a quiet taste. Steering wheel's quite a nice size. Paddles here, not sure how much I'm gonna use them. imagine when you want to throw it into corners and stuff it feels a little bit heavy but I can imagine it goes around them absolutely perfectly. Five minutes into the journey and I'm trying to get my head 
around the value of this car. It's a 2012, so it's three, even though we're in 2016, we're barely in 2016, so I'll still class it as three years old. Three years old for a 2012 six litre V12 Aston Martin. For the price, there is nothing else out there. I think, and I'm sure Grant can agree with, there's nothing else in this price range that you can get a V12 that is so new, with so much kit inside. It is unbelievable. And that looks and sounds so good. And like I said, for the first five minutes of driving here, we've got a puddle here. <laughs> but as, country, as countryside drives go, I don't, I don't think, my back isn't sweating. <laughs> my, like, my blood is racing at a moderate temperature, at an enjoyable temperature, or at an enjoyable velocity is probably the right word, but let's put my foot down. Ease <laughs> the tarmac up pretty quickly, <laughs> but it's such a it's such a slow power delivery compared to the Lamborghini where it's instant. You put your foot down in this, and it's like a little bit spongy, as if to be like, do you really want to put your foot down? I think that's what I like about this car. It's just a little bit more relaxed. Like the pedals are central, the Lamborghinis are, but it's just the. The throttle response is just slightly different and I can probably confirm or Grant can confirm as soon as you press the small button that slightly changes and everything becomes a little bit more sharp and a little bit more on edge. <laughs> if the Aston Martin Virage, the Aston Martin Virage has what I would say a single clutch gearbox that feels like a double clutch. I mean that probably covers it both ways. Yes. If it does have a double clutch, then it kind of it, it, it feels like a double clutch. But yeah, that throttle response on the pedal, the throttle pedal as well, is is incredibly different to sport and non-sport. I think seeing an Aston Martin on the road isn't as, in the UK, uncommon as maybe some people think Aston Martins. There are a lot in the UK, um, but every time you see them, it always turns my head. I always love seeing an Aston Martin. Maybe the Aston Martin brand isn't particularly, I don't fit the sort of generic Aston Martin driver, if that is the right thing to say. You're an English gentleman. I'm an English, yeah, quintessentially, I'm English. English. <laughs> quintessentially English, yeah, I suppose I am actually, yeah, I'm English, so yeah, probably, like, it's just, it's that image that the Aston Martin has, like, you just, you want to be in a suit all of the time, and you want to be turning up to all of these posh restaurants that you get portions that are like this big, <laughs> taste amazing, and fill you up, and you have no idea how after, <laughs> but it is such a cool car, and Sounds good. It sounds really good. 
now you can just take it out of sport mode. Will it automatically go back into auto mode if I leave the pedals? Push D. I have to push D. There we go. Now I'm back in auto mode, below 2000 RPM. And I'm back in a cruiser. I'm on a dual carriageway. the sun is out it has been raining pretty awfully for the last 12 hours so it is still a little bit slippery on the road and the Aston Martin there it came to life a little bit is something like an Aston Martin something that I could enjoy this year and after driving it I wasn't sort of too keen on the idea I know Sam Seb and Tim have been trolling me and there's been hashtags of get an Aston and all sorts of stuff to do with me buying an Aston Martin, replacing the Lamborghini for an Aston Martin for the for this particular reason of doing long road trips and things like that, but still having a lot of fun at the same time. And I wasn't keen on the whole Aston Martin brand. I didn't think that I would fit in it, and I didn't think the Supercars of London would fit in it, but now after driving it, I have thoroughly enjoyed an Aston Martin. It is really cool. Maybe I need to go on Auto Trader and check out sort of things are available. So now we're back on the country roads. This thing is crazy. Oh look at that, 550 Marinello. That's cool. Right, here we go. So we're going to go back onto the road that we started out in and I've pressed the suspension mode. It's a little bit it's a little bit stiffer but it's not like too hard like right now we're on uneven country roads but road noise slightly gets a little bit louder but it's still bearable that's good I'm gonna put it into sport mode and, and couple couple firm suspension a bit of sportiness as well so we've got are good and I'm doing about 10-15% on the brakes. Yeah, this is good. So there we have it, that is the Aston Martin Virage 2012 6 litre V12. Absolutely stunning piece of kit. Something that I didn't really think that I was going to enjoy driving, something that I just wanted to understand as a car. But it turns out that the Aston Martin is an awesome, awesome car. So I'd just like to thank Southern Sky Motors for allowing me to come down here and drive the Aston Martin Virage with the sun in my eyes. I don't think we could have picked a better day. I